Arizona versus the villages. If you've seen very many or any of my other videos, you'll know that I normally just talk about active adult or 55 plus communities in the state of Arizona. Well, today we're going to do a little comparison about the villages because I was so curious what the heck was going on at the villages. I recently took a trip there just to check it out. And I think I was able to put together some feelings and thoughts about the neighborhood. I want to share them with you today. The Villages is actually the largest 55 plus community in the entire world. Imagine that. It's not really even a community. It is its own city. Over 145,000 people live there right now and it is growing every day. When I was there, they are moving lots of dirt and building even more homes. People just don't seem to stop coming. It has such a great reputation worldwide that people are moving there in droves. Trying to compare it against just one community might be a little bit hard just because, you know, let's say if we compared it to one Arizona community, you can't really get a good picture of a smaller community versus 145,000 people. But if we think about a collection of all of the Arizona communities, I think I can come pretty close. Now, when I talk to other people about the villages, I get a broad spectrum of opinion. There doesn't seem to be a middle. People either love and adore it, or they say, oh, the villages, I would never go there. Well, maybe there could be something in between, and I'll tell you um, my thoughts about it for me at the end of this video, but let's dive in and I can tell you about what the differences are. I don't want to give you a lot of my own personal opinions, but I would just want to talk about what are the differences between the two places. Well, all I can say is, wow. It was a big wow. It was so big and so much visually happening in the communities that I just couldn't even get my head around it. But it is a little overwhelming. And I think that's what a lot of people get put off by. If that's too stimulating for you or too complicated, then this isn't going to be your place. Other people like big activity. It's kind of like the difference in people who might live in Manhattan versus a small farm town in Nebraska. You want what you want and either side is not going to fit in the other one's neighborhood. They're both very good, but different things for different people. The Villages is definitely big and it can feel overwhelming when you first get there. If you're looking at 145,000 residents and uh, an entire city devoted to 55 plus, when I say entire city, it is a city. They have their own mayor and city council. They've got their own government agencies there. And so that is going to be a little different than a lot of our Arizona communities. Now, Sun City is its own city, but still not as big as the villages. Our communities tend to be a little smaller, places like Pebble Creek, 6,000 homes. That might mean maybe 10,000-ish people when it's fully built out. Other communities that are super small. My community where I live in Scottsdale has about 400 homes. So that's quite a few less people than you would find even in some of the bigger Arizona communities and certainly much tinier than the villages. If I was looking for a big selection of clubs, I would not be living where I am living. I can tell you that right now. They have a few, but not nearly as many as the villages. This really is the Disneyland of 55 plus. Things going on everywhere. However, I didn't really feel like it was an e-ticket experience. Felt a little copycat-ish as far as the way it looked and felt in comparison to the Disney parks, but it was not as, I guess, exclusive or nice as maybe some of the communities that I'm used to in Arizona. It had a little bit of a vacation feel, but I think that would wear thin on me. I was there for just a few days and it indeed did wear thin, but if you want big, this is the place. Now the villages is not gated. It'd be pretty hard to put a gate around an entire city. 
However, they do have little gates at every village entrance. The Villages is called that because it is a large collection of small villages. So from one end to the other, it's a lot of little villages. They give the false sense of security though in putting these little gates up. Our Airbnb had a gate, but we were instructed if you forget your access card, just press the red button. So not really gated, but we have communities in Arizona that are not gated that are just fine. A gate sometimes gives a false sense of security. Now this large collection of villages seems to be laid out. It's all very master planned, but it's laid out with X number of smaller villages around a large town square. There are I think four-ish town squares that are out there. And I think there are plans to build more in the future as they keep developing more villages. But that is kind of the hub of your life is going to be in that town square. In each little collection of villages will be rec centers. The one confusing thing to me though, there wasn't a lot of recreation going on in these rec centers. In Arizona, when we think recreation, we think things like fitness or pickleball. These places seem to be almost museum-like and very, very different from what I'm used to in my Arizona communities. The rec centers seem to each have a theme. There was one for the armed forces. There was one for first responders. There was one that was a golf theme. They were all very, very nice, not thinking really country club-ish, but slightly. And maybe it was the Southern decor that put me off, but I'm sorry, Florida fans. These places, to me at least, and I think to my sister who was there with me, it looked almost like if Cracker Barrel and your grandma's house had a baby. Wallpaper over the top everywhere, over decorated, lots of antique looking sofas and places to sit. Several of them even had the rocking chairs on the front porch area, hence the Cracker Barrel thing. Um, they didn't have the gift shop though, like the Cracker Barrel, and that kind of disappointed me because I do like that. But it was different. It, when they say recreation, what they mean is they might have a cardio drumming class going on, which I did see that and that looked like fun, in a ballroom. But these are just a collection of big rooms where people might have a meeting or their music group meets to practice. It is not a place where they're going to do arts and crafts and for the most part, any kind of fitness activity. Some of them do have a pool outside that is attached, but it didn't really feel like our Arizona pools at some of the larger communities that definitely have a resort style vibe to them where we've got cool music playing and lots of lounge chairs and it's a social hub. It didn't have that feel to me and so very different where the fitness and the pools are concerned. Now, still talking about those rec centers, I have to confess that I might have laughed a little and I'm trying not to laugh right now. But what I did find in these rec centers was a weird collection of mannequins. Yes, mannequins. They would have this upper level, like a little staircase to nowhere, but mannequins dressed up in costumes, either the armed forces or golfers or now, all kinds of things. I don't know what that was for. Maybe somebody used to own a Dillard's and they went out of business and they donated the mannequins. I don't know, but it was creepy and strange. And I'm sorry to say this, but it, it screamed out old people live here. And I probably shouldn't say this because I'm not young, but I'm not really old either. And these places, seem to be a little Lawrence Welk for me. And guys, you know me, I am just being honest. I know that I'm gonna get comments from a lot of you that say, how dare you, we love the villages. And I think that's great if you do, but I'm sorry, I don't want any mannequins in my rec center. I want a gym. 
And they don't even have gyms there. They have independent businesses like a regular gym that you could go join. There's one at one of the squares that I saw. And one of the rec centers had a little tiny fitness area attached, but you had to pay a separate fee for that. So that in and of itself is very, very different than what we have at our Arizona communities. Our community amenities, especially in the larger communities, will also generally have dedicated spaces for creative arts, where you'll have sometimes a whole separate building that is a collection of studios, maybe a paint studio, a jewelry making studio, a quilting studio, where you'll have access to all of the long arm quilters and things like that. Now, again, I was not at the villages very long, and so, if they have that kind of stuff, please leave me a comment below so I know. But it, I didn't find in the few days that I was there any centers like that. It seemed like if you wanted to do crafts, they had spaces for that, but you're going to need to take your project in a tote of some sort and work at your project at a table area with other people, maybe during a class or something. And so if that's your thing, great. I really like those big dedicated arts and crafts centers. I can't wait until I can be out at Pebble Creek taking a fusion glass class. I really want to dig in and do those kind of things. I didn't really find that at the villages. For my golf friends, the villages could be a pretty good deal because golf there is included in your monthly amenity fee. Now, rather than an HOA fee, you pay a monthly amenity fee, which is depending, I think probably on the county, it might be in the 180s to the 190s per month. And we'll go into costs here in a few minutes, but that does include free golf. So if you're a person who likes to play every day, lots and lots of golf courses. All you have to do is book a time and go down there. I went and tested out one of the driving ranges and remembered that my golf game is really in bad shape and I need to work on that. But it, it was very nice and it was free. So that is a big plus versus the Arizona communities where golf is generally not included and you have to buy either a membership or a little punch card where you can play so many times per week or per season. There are different levels. If you're not a golfer, you're paying for other people to golf. And I hear that a lot about our Arizona communities. Well, I don't want a golf course community because I don't want to pay for it. It's already going to be there no matter what. And a golf course does make your community a little better resale. People like having a golf course, even if they don't play, but at the villages, it's free. Now they do have some executive style, bigger courses that are more country club like, and you can pay for a separate membership if you want something a little higher quality, maybe more challenging, a, you know, a bigger name designer made the course. Um, and if, if you want the country club effect, you can pay a separate membership fee and be a part of that. But regular golf is all included. And I really do like that idea. Clubs in the villages are certainly plentiful. I think there are about over 2,500 clubs in the villages. They literally have everything from A to Z. But what I would say is if you take the number of clubs, uh, divide the number of people, per capita, it might not be that much different than a community, let's say like Pebble Creek with 10,000 people. Now, if you're looking at an Arizona community with only a thousand people, probably going to be a lot less clubs, but you know that going in and like me in my neighborhood, I'm not there for clubs. I work all the time and I'm, I'm not retired yet. And so it's not a factor for me. Now, one more thing I want to talk to you about, about these rec centers. I know I'm kind of circling back, but the pools were different. In Arizona, we definitely have more of a resort type feeling. We've got palm trees, we've got lap pools, we've got pools outdoors and indoors, pools for just hanging out and meeting friends. You can sit and have a drink in the pool. These pools seemed a little bit different, but I did happen upon one really fun thing and um, too bad my audio didn't work out, but we kind of snuck into one of the pool areas. There were all these people there in wetsuits. It was a giant volleyball 
league going on and they all would just show up they were wearing wetsuits because it was cold that day but they just they match up teams and then they play for like 30 or 40 minutes and then they rotate out and then the next team goes in man that place was hopping they were having fun i would say it was every bit as active as a pickleball group would be and we don't, to my knowledge, have any big volleyball leagues. So that really was a pretty cool thing. But these are not the, you know, resort look with the palm trees and the lounge chairs. For the most part, these pools are pretty basic with a big fence around them that of course matches the Armed Forces Rec Center or whatever the theme is. And so you just need to be mindful of that when making your choices. Let's talk about the homes. Very, very different, at least for me, and homes are my business. So I was a little surprised at the lack of the variety of the homes. And that comes from, it is one giant town where one developer had a limited number of floor plans and they kind of all look the same to me. The only difference is they have kind of a graduated series of homes, just like our Arizona communities do. And it starts with the very lowest level, which I think is probably what my Airbnb was. And I'm guessing that home might sell for 350, 375. It was a cute little place, but no real backyard. It had a little screened in front porch, which I don't see myself sitting out there and staring at people through my screen. I thought that was a little different, but you have to have a screen because of the bugs and vinyl siding and grass. Everywhere is grass, you guys. Arizona people, we're not used to the grass. Somebody's gotta cut that grass. I kind of like my desert landscape. I will say though, it was very, very pretty, but not a huge amount of variation other than the occasional alligator thrown in. So a little bit different. It went all the way up to a Premier Series. They have homes, you know, at around a million dollars, but they seem to be more in an average to lower price range. That seems to be the bulk of them. And again, I didn't check out every single real estate listing, so don't leave me hateful comments. But I, I thought it was not very interesting. And maybe, you villagers can tell me. I suspect though, that's because the house really doesn't matter. You are there for the mega, mega activities and things going on versus what's going on inside your four walls. Now, one other thing I want to explain to you, which I find this very bizarre in the villages, they have two different MLS systems. The VMLS is run by the builder developer and they have their own agents. Then you've got the regular MLS, which has listings listed by regular people like me who live and work in that area. So if you're going there and you want a brand new home, I can't sell that to you or a Florida agent can't sell that to you like I would in Arizona. I can help you with builders and what's in our MLS. It's very exclusive just to the village's realtor staff then they also will sell resales. So some people I suspect will have two listings. They'll have it on the VMLS and they'll have it on the regular MLS. That's a lot of extra work, you guys. I, I find it odd. The brand new construction, most people do not build from dirt. They kind of have a bidding system that opens up, I don't know, every week or something and you just do an online purchase. And if you're the winner of the bid, you get the house and you know it's already pre-decorated for you and then you move in. Now again, if you're just there for the amenities, you probably don't care. But if you're somebody who's lived in you know, your mom and dad's house after they passed away and that's the house you grew up in and you've never had a new home, you might want the excitement of picking your own selections or having a little more control over what's in your backyard. Their pools down there, if you have a backyard pool or a porch, it's going to be covered by, I think they call it a bird cage, which is a big screened in area. You can't just sit outside like we can in Arizona. 
I really enjoy my extra living rooms that I have in my courtyard and on my back patio. I don't have to be screened in. Some people do to keep it a little warmer in the winter, but we're not worried about bugs eating us alive. Now let's talk about what I think is the biggest difference between, other than the size, between the villages and Arizona communities. That is the party atmosphere. Now, first of all, everybody in the villages is driving golf carts. They have their own little golf cart road. I call it the golf cart highway because people are zipping up and down and back and forth on this dedicated golf cart road. And where are they going? Well, they're going to things like pickleball or to see the mannequins, I don't know, or to go to the squares. Now, the squares are where everything happens a day and night but really starting after about three o'clock is when things really start to heat up they will have an, an old school looks kind of like Andy Griffith show or something where they've got a little bandstand in the middle of the square and a bunch of white plastic chairs stacked up and at three o'clock everybody starts showing up picking their chair and marking out their seat there usually are a collection of restaurants and bars located around that bandstand so people can go get a drink, they can go get something to eat, they can come out, claim their chair, sit and listen to music. As the drinking increases, the dancing increases. And some people even have their favorite band that they follow from square to square. I thought it was a fun thing because I was on a little mini break. I didn't live there. Would I be there every night? No. Maybe if guests came to stay with me, I might say, hey, you want to go to the square? But I am never going down there and going dancing with strange people that I don't know. I did unfortunately see a few instances of some kind of creepy men and creepy women trying to probably go home with each other, but nothing out of ordinary that you might not see in an Arizona bar. So it caught me off guard because that's just not my lifestyle, but I, I don't think it was the out of control, sex crazed place that you hear about, not by any stretch. These are people that that's their thing. They like to dance, they like to have a few drinks, and they like to have fun, and then they drive home. I will say, however, that there are a lot of drunk driving incidents and arrests made because you can't drink and drive in a golf cart just like you can't in a car, and a lot of things happen. And so the drinking and party culture is very big there. So keep that in mind if you like a little lower key experience, Maybe the villages isn't for you, or maybe you just don't buy a house based on your favorite square. But they do have nice places to eat there. They do have a little bit of shopping. I'd say it's light shopping, but it, you know, not major shopping. There's not a grocery store in every square for sure. So you're going to have to probably go to the edge of the bubble, as they call it, or outside the bubble, God forbid, to get your groceries. So keep that in mind. You can do most things inside the bubble, but not everything. But the squares would be a really cool thing if you're a person who says, I love to dance. Then I think this is gonna be your place. You are really going to love it. Not my thing, so Arizona is working pretty good for me. In Arizona, we do have, at the larger communities, a lot of concerts. We have dances that are sponsored by different organizations and people. And so there is dancing available. You're not gonna be dance free. You could do ballroom dancing, you can do line dancing, all, all kinds of things. But it is not always free. You know, somebody's gotta pay the band. And in the villages, I think the restaurants are paying the band and it's a much smaller environment and so if you're a dancer arizona can still work it's just not going to be seven nights a week 12 months out of the year the common areas of the villages are not maintained by the hoa like they are in arizona all of those big spaces are maintained by the city of the villages now who pays for that well you've got property taxes, and you've got a thing that they call the bond. I'll go over some fees here in a minute. But the bond is a total amount per house that gets assessed when you buy your house. Some people have already paid for the bond in advance, and other people pay it off monthly. So if you're buying a resale, you might find one that has the bond paid for and get a little better deal. But if you're buying a new home or where somebody didn't pay the bond, it has to be paid off. So that is what maintains everything 
without an HOA fee. Then you've got your monthly amenities fee. Remember, 180s, 190s, so not super high. But you have to pay that whether you're using amenities or not. So factor that in. In Arizona, we will have just one all-encompassing HOA fee that will pay for everything, unless maybe if you're taking an art class or something, or let's say you want to join the pickleball club, you are going to pay a little extra fee for that club but everything for the most part is included in your HOA. What you're going to pay at the villages versus what you'll pay in Arizona. Now, I don't have this on a spreadsheet, it's not exact, but let's think about a $500,000 house, let's say in Pebble Creek. In that case, property taxes are 3,200-ish. Then you are going to pay a um, HOA fee every month. You do pay one year HOA when you move in as a capital improvement fee, but it's just one year. Year. Um, if you're buying a new home in most of our communities, that fee is already paid by the builder. But you do not have a bond fee. You're just going to pay your monthly HOA. And then, of course, as I said, any little class fees that you have. Homeowner's insurance for that house in Pebble Creek might be about $900 a year. Not too bad if we're thinking about Florida, though. People talk about, oh, Florida's the best because no state income tax. Yeah but property taxes and the bond on this $500,000 home in the villages are going to be 2%. That's $10,000 a year, you guys. We're already spending more money than we would spend in Arizona. Then the big kicker, and this is why a lot of people are starting to leave Florida, that is homeowner's insurance. Just because the villages doesn't have hurricanes doesn't mean that you're not gonna have to pay for the hurricane people in other parts of the state. Your homeowner's insurance could be three or $4,000 a year. So all in all, even with paying a little bit of income tax, which isn't such a big deal in Arizona because your income's not gonna be that high anymore, you're retired. So I think all in all, the villages is gonna be a little more expensive than an Arizona community and certainly a lot more expensive than some of our smaller communities that don't have much of a fee at all. In our Arizona communities, for the most part, every community is going to have vacation rental restrictions. I don't think Sun City does as a whole. Some little HOA areas in Sun City have said no rentals. They voted on that in the twin homes, but the single family homes have no HOA, so you can do what you want there. But but not a lot of vacation rentals. They're few and far between. In the bigger communities like Victory at Verado, no vacation rentals, period. Um, they require a 12 month lease. In Pebble Creek and most areas, 30 day restriction. Very easy if you decide you wanna rent your home out for the summer while you're gone or during the winter. If you're not coming here this winter, you can rent it out and get a nice little rent check. But it's not a sea of rentals like the villages. They don't have any restrictions. To find my place to stay, I simply went on Airbnb, I booked three nights, I paid my money, and I showed up. And it felt a little disconnected to me. So if I live next door to that rental where I stayed, I'd never have a neighbor. And that made me a little bit sad. I wouldn't rule out buying one of those for myself as an investor. But do I wanna live next door to that? No, I want real neighbors that I can hang out with on my front screen and porch. Uh, probably not there, but in Arizona, that's what we do. Or watch people walk by every day and you wave at them. Hey, how you guys doing? Haven't seen you in a while. It's neighborly, which is why we're in these communities. All in all, the villages is a very nice place. Would I live there? No, no way. I'm an Arizona girl. I love the Western part of the United States. If you've watched my videos, you know I came here from Colorado. I'm a girl of the West and that's not going to change. I'm not a Florida fan. I don't like humidity at all. That drove me crazy down there. But I do think a lot of people really love the villages. Just like it's not for me, Arizona might not be good for them either. So I think the great thing is here in America, we have lots of choices. I think the villages is a super fun place. Would I go back there and visit? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'd rent that same Airbnb and I'd go down there for a long weekend and have fun and eat out and 
you know, visit the mannequins again. But would I live there? No, it felt a little too much like the Truman Show where everything probably is about the same every day. And maybe that doesn't bother people who are there. It just felt like every mile was just a repeat of the mile before it. And it's a big place. It would not be for me. And I know I talk to a lot of people who come to Arizona and that topic comes up. Would you look at the villages? Most people who are coming to Arizona say, oh no, never. Or some people say, yeah, we looked at it and just wasn't for us. So there are definitely differences. Both are very good. I'm not gonna say one is better than the other because I don't know you yet and who am I to say? I love Arizona. I love my Arizona communities and this is where I'm going to stay. So if you would like to talk more about what I saw at the villages or Arizona communities, please reach out to me at the number below on the screen. Let's schedule a time for a call. My team and I are working in these communities every single day. We know them inside and out. We would love to help you narrow down your search.